Ashley. Just got another delivery. Hell. <laughs> I'm a hell. start my show. Okay, so I have a ton of stories for you because this is going to all kind of play out here. And uh, one of the first stories I'm going to go with today is about the weed camp. Okay, so on Hot TV yesterday, Freddie Pritchard announced that he is coming back, that he's going to start his show. So I have this video where I tried to go to the POT TV page to show you this. But after going there, I discovered that after viewing it live yesterday, it had been blocked by, I don't know, somebody for some kind of copyright infringement or some kind of nonsense, I don't understand. But basically, I couldn't get the video of, of Freddie announcing that he was going to start the show again. And I can't remember when he said it exactly it was going to be. So I know it's soon, but it's like so aggravating that it got blocked in my country. So I'll show you that strange video of me being blocked. So my first story today, stoners, is huge. Freddy's coming back. Freddy the Weed King is returning to his live show on Sunday. He announced it here on Pot TV. But for some reason, it says that now I can't see that video or show you the date that he said he was going to start because I didn't catch it. I saw it yesterday. I know it was uh, soon, though. So we'll, I'll look for him this weekend. Uh, hopefully he'll do an ad. This is strange. What does this say? This video contains content from SME, who has blocked it in your country on copyright grounds. Sorry about that. What's SME? You know, they must not like the Weed King. You know, you know what this tells me? Tells me that, Freddie, you're big and you scare them. And so now they're trying to stop me from seeing an ad saying that you're going to be on, back on. Dude, that's what it tells me. You're big. You're big now. Look at what's going on here. They're trying to keep me from seeing the video where you announced that you were coming back. Very interesting. Let's see if it says anything in the description. Nope. Nope, that's pretty much it. But it was a very interesting video I watched live. I was thrilled. <laughs> and now look, hmm, interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Anyway, 
So, uh, that's good news to have two of our main uh, weed entertainers on YouTube, weed tubers back, doing their thing is so awesome. It's like, yay! What a great way to end the summer. All right. Now we're going to get into the announcement from the DEA yesterday, where they were saying that marijuana is basically a dangerous drug, an addictive, dangerous drug with no medical benefits. All right, so we're just going to go through each of these stories, building a narrative as we go. So the first two stories is about parents across the country that are angry at this ruling because they have children that desperately rely on this medicine for a healthy way of life. And the DEA just told them, the world is flat. Yeah. That you are doing something sinful to your child, which is scary for a parent. You know. So the first one we're going to get into is Georgia, a parent who furious over DEA's marijuana rule. John Sherrick reporting tonight, and local parents are fighting to get their children. They are furious over a federal government decision. Today, the DEA said marijuana has no medical use, and it should be in the same category as heroin. Chris Hopper spoke to legislators and parents fighting for medical marijuana in Georgia. And, and Chris, this is a, a, just a huge fight uh, that has been going on for many years, but this is a big blow to them. Jeff, tonight I talked to that legislator. I've talked to parents. They say the federal government just flat out got it wrong. They believe marijuana is medicine. <laughs> Jennifer Conforti challenges anyone who doesn't think marijuana is medicine. So look at the girl in these videos from two years ago and compare her. She started biting her arm, uh, horribly so. <laughs> to this little girl who can laugh and joke about it now. Just like that, except it was a lot worse. You can't legally use medical marijuana to treat autism here in Georgia, but for two years, Conforti has been giving it to her daughter, Abby. Ravenous, she couldn't not bite herself, and she bit herself bloody and bruised. When she realized this grocery bag full of prescriptions she still keeps. I don't even know what that did either. Wasn't doing the job, and marijuana was. It is medicine, and it works. And it works for a lot of people. It works for a lot of people I know personally. It works for people all over the country. It works for people all over the world. And it's been working for thousands of years. But tonight, the federal government disagrees. The DEA's decision surprised making Representative Alan Peake, the man who has been fighting for medical marijuana in Georgia. Crystallizes that this really is a state's rights issue. Clearly, we cannot wait on an inept federal government to make good, positive decisions for its uh, citizens. But we uncovered emails earlier this year that showed Georgia Governor Nathan Deal isn't budging on this issue as long as marijuana is a Schedule One drug. Hi, sugar. How are you, my baby? For now, the Conforties fight on whether or not what they're doing is illegal. It's night and day. There's no question. And the DEA's report basically says there's no scientific evidence that marijuana is safe and effective in treating a specific disorder. Basically, the risks do not outweigh the benefits. But the patients and the parents who we continue to talk to over and over about this issue just do not agree. All right, Chris, thank you.
umbrella blocking the wind. Each out as if we were blowing. <laughs> Cheers. Enforcement Administration refusing to budge on its stance on marijuana despite growing acceptance across the country. Across the board, he's been fabulous over the last year with these levels of cannabis. I, I, I never would have expected. Many say you can't ignore the plant's medical benefits, but the DEA disagrees, saying marijuana has no accepted medical use in America. And thank you for joining us tonight at 5. I'm Maris Dea Brady. I'm Jeremy Hubbard. The DEA refuses to reschedule marijuana, so it remains classified as one of the most dangerous drugs available, right along with heroin, LSD, and ecstasy. Here are some details on these new developments. The DEA's decision comes after it consulted with the Health and Human Services Agency. The agency concluded marijuana has a high potential for abuse, that it has no accepted medical use in the U.S., and lacks an acceptable level of safety for even under medical supervision. The DEA says it will allow more studying of marijuana by letting more institutions grow pot plants for research, though. Fox 31 Denver's Dave Young today met with a Colorado mother who strongly disagrees with the DEA's decision, saying marijuana has saved her son's life. He joins us live with that story. Dave. And Jeremy, she brought her son all the way across the country to use medical marijuana because she says her, do his, her doctors told her they'd run out of options to treat him and give him very little chance to survive. Now she says he's getting better every month. She calls it nothing short of a miracle. He loves to be touched. Four-year-old Ezra Kaiser wasn't expected to live until his first birthday. Born with a severe form of brain disorder, he was having up to 500 seizures a day. Just starting high CBD cannabis oil, we saw a 95% reduction in seizures. Ezra's mother says doctors had him on dozens of medications, including morphine, fentanyl, dialudid, and phenobarbital. Didn't matter how much they were giving him, he couldn't go more than an hour without screaming in pain. As he worsened, they had to put Ezra in a medical coma. They said, okay, well, the doses are getting so high at this point, we're not comfortable giving him any more unless you agree to sign a DNR. Uh, and if he stops breathing, we will, not, we will not put him on life support and you'll have to let him die. Instead, she took him home for hospice care when a friend called. She said, you know, can I bring you some, some high THC oil? And I said, well, you know, at this point, um, what's it going to hurt? He's on hospice. She gave Ezra very high doses of cannabis oil, which put him into a deep sleep. And after three weeks, he woke up bright-eyed, smiling, lungs clear, and he's been fine since. He hasn't had a dystonic attack and no pain in a year. A former special education teacher from the South, she's still amazed marijuana held the key. That was never a thought in my mind that I would ever give my child a medication like that, and then to have it work so miraculously and to be able to get all of these other medications out of his system, he was basically comatose most of his life. Now starting to communicate with her son for the first time, she's frustrated the FDA won't recognize marijuana's potential. I think it's absolutely absurd that there's no medical benefit. I, I personally am not a proponent for rescheduling. I am a proponent for descheduling. And right now, Marissa is producing her son's marijuana oil, the THC oil that she uses on him grown with organically grown marijuana that she raises. She's afraid if the DEA and the FDA rescheduled it as a drug, it'll go to big pharmaceutical companies who will take control out of the hands of families like her who benefit from its use. Dave Young, Fox 31. Thank you, Dave. Again. Now, of course, one of the main advocates for these child um, patients, marijuana patients, is Sanjay Gupta, who wrote a scathing piece yesterday on CNN criticizing the DEA's findings and Dr. Sanjay Gupta, DEA's missed opportunity on medical marijuana. Uh, and it's like basically what it's saying is that uh, you still have all kinds of restrictions to studies. So it's still going to, even though they say they're opening up access to more marijuana, their rules still restrict the ability to research it. So they really didn't do anything except to make more marijuana available to researchers who can't take up that research. And he pointed out college 
scientists that have already turned down research because they think it looks unsightly to have it at their college, to have PTSD veterans vaping or smoking marijuana to, to find out what the effects are of PTSD would look bad at their college. Dailycaller.com, CNN chief medical correspondent, says DEA missed opportunity with pot. CNN's chief medical correspondent thinks the Drug Enforcement Administration's DEA refusal to reschedule marijuana is a mistake. The DEA will allow for more pot to be grown for medical research. But Dr. Sanjay Gupta said this is largely symbolic. Scientists will still have a difficult time getting access to studies, uh, study its benefits, Kupta writes in Thursday CNN article. Uh, while this w will be hailed as a victory for research, it will largely be symbolic, Gupta writes, because no matter how much marijuana is available, if access is still difficult, it hardly matters. Gupta says access to pot for medical reasons uh, remains beyond a locked door while the DEA opened up new avenues for, for potential studies universities would that would study it still remain skeptical of allowing such studies Gupta notes the case of Dr. Sue Sissel Sisley at Arizona State University ASU who was trying to get permission from ASU to perform a study on the potential benefits of marijuana on veterans suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD she was let go by the university for what she said was bad optics and ASU's mind in ASU's mind they uh, did not like the uh, optics of veterans smoking and vaporizing marijuana on their campus even in the context of a rigorous FDA approved randomized controlled trial according to the 2014 CNN article Gupta also noted that the gatekeepers of marijuana research the National Institute of Drug Abuse largely favor studies being done on the negative effects of pot not the positive ones he says that after searching for U.S. National Library of Medicine database, he found 1,434 total papers on medical marijuana, only 57 of which were studies uh, studying the benefits of the plant. Gupta says this massive disparity creates a highly distorted picture. He also notes the disparity among government agencies. While the DEA says marijuana has no medical value, the Department of Health and Human Services has uh, patents on cannabinoids for a host of medical uses. Even a former DEA chief administrative law judge disagrees with the ruling. In a 1998 petition to unschedule marijuana, Francis Young said, pot in its natural form is one of the safest therapeutic active substances known to man by any measure of rational analysis marijuana can be safely used within the supervised routine of medical care that a plant could provide such so much benefit and still remain behind these locked doors is worth speaking up about gupta includes gupta was at one point opposed to medical marijuana but after researching the benefits of its chain uh, of it changed his mind he now has a series on CNN special uh, specials about its benefits called weed
uh, reactions across the net to DEA ruling. This goes from senators to presidential candidates to many of the activists. So here again, we got a tweet this morning from Tom Angel, I guess is how you pronounce his name, sorry. Uh, when DEAHQ tried to explain its marijuana rescheduling denial on Twitter, it didn't go well. Confused why marijuana is a Schedule One drug? An explanation, DEA and GoUSA.gov. Uh, Jero <laughs> uh, Arma Obscura comments DEAHQ. If this were an explanatory expository essay, okay, you would get an F for failing to address the prompt. In other words, this, this doesn't fly, this explanation. Marijuana.com, August 11, 2016, by Tom Angel. Uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration announced Thursday that it has decided to keep marijuana in Schedule 1, the most restrictive category under federal law. Cannabis law reform advocates uh, reacted swiftly and negatively to the news. Here's an overview of what people are saying. Washington State Governor Jay Inslee Democrat, I am disappointed that we don't have a national standard for at least medical marijuana regardless following the will of Washington state voters. We will continue to maintain a well-regulated adult use marijuana system and continue to allow patients to have access for necessary medical purposes. A portion of the revenues from marijuana sales in our state goes towards treatment and youth prevention. As states continue to legalize medical and recreational marijuana, there is more uh, uh, that the federal government must do to provide states with legal certainty and empower the operation of safe systems across the country. Oregon Governor Kate Brown, Democrat, lack of federal guidance on banking and environmental issues has put Oregon at risk and today's decision didn't address those concerns. Uh, as we'd hoped, the DEA's decision short-sightedly focuses on technical, not practical, aspects of marijuana regulation. This makes it more difficult for states that have legalized marijuana use or who are poised to, uh, to proceed lawfully and safely. Uh, Maya Harris, Senior Policy Advisor to Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Marijuana is already being used for medical purposes in states across the country, and it has the potential for even further medical use. As Hillary Clinton has said throughout this campaign, we should make it easier to study marijuana so that we can better understand its potential benefits, as well as its side effects, as President Hillary as President Hillary will build on the important steps announced today by scheduling marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2 substance. She will also ensure Colorado and other states that have enacted marijuana laws can continue to serve as laboratories of democracy. Senator Cory Booker, Booker, <laughs> Booker, Democrat, New Jersey. Uh, the DEA's failure to reclassify marijuana is disappointing. There are Americans who can realize real medical benefits if, treated, if treatment options is brought out of the shadows. And choosing to ignore the medical value of marijuana defies common sense and the scientific evidence. Uh, currently, 25 states and the District of Columbia have passed laws supporting its medical use. And it's time that the federal policy caught up. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Democrat. Uh, bad news. DEA HQ refused to reschedule marijuana. This has wide implications for med research, law enforcement, and business. Elizabeth Warren. I'll keep pushing our federal agencies to reschedule marijuana as part of crafting a national research and public health strategy. U.S. S Senator Christine Gillibrand, Democrat, 
removing barriers to medical uh, marijuana research is an important step towards uh, helping children who suffer from seizures disorders get medicine they need. Uh, time for the DEA to remove marijuana from Schedule 1 to explain medical marijuana research and ensure families expand, excuse me, ensure families in need get legal access to treatment. Bernie Sanders, it, it's well past time for the U.S. to take marijuana off the federal government's list of outlawed drugs. Bernie Sanders, keeping marijuana in the same category as heroin is absurd. The time is long overdue for us to remove the federal prohibition on marijuana. Bernie Sanders, keep marijuana in the same category as heroin is absurd. The time is overdue for us to uh, remove federal uh, prohibition of, of marijuana. If we are serious about criminal justice reform, we must remove marijuana from Federal Controlled Substance Act. Uh, Senator Jeff Mac Merkley, with DEHQ's con conti uh, continuation of prohibition on medical marijuana, OR's legal marijuana business face huge hurdles. Senator Jeff Mackley, disappointed in DHA, or DEHQ's, uh, we must act to allow access to banking for marijuana biz in states with marijuana, with legalized marijuana. Ron Wyden. Uh, this flies in the face of choice, choices made by Oregon voters. Ron Wyden, the DEA HQ, is keeping federal law on marijuana behind the times. We'll continue to press for rescheduling. Congressman Steve Cohen, marijuana must be rescheduled. Numerous physicians and 25 states recognize the medical benefits of marijuana and keep marijuana as Schedule 1. With heroin and LSD is ludicrous. It is an injustice and an, an anchor, uh, an anachronism, an ana, anachronism. <laughs> it is an uh, extreme example of cultural lag as society has moved way ahead of our outdated drug laws. The Attorney General can and should act to better reflect the science, the medical research, and the opinions of the American people when it comes to the federal classification of marijuana. And by the way, congratulations to Ms. Michael Phelps, the world's greatest athlete. Uh, Congressman Earl Blumenauer, Keeping marijuana at Schedule 1 continues an outdated failed approach. Leave patients and marijuana businesses trapped between state and federal laws. Uh, Americans have spoken with the majority supporting full legalization. It's not enough to remove some barriers to medical research. Marijuana shouldn't be listed as Schedule 1. It should be listed, it shouldn't be listed at all. It is imperative as part of the most a progressive administration on marijuana in history that the DEA work to end the failed prohibition of marijuana. Congressman Dana Rockenbauer, Republican California, uh, Ro Rohenbacher, excuse me, the decision by the DEA to continue to categorize marijuana in the same schedule as heroin and LSD and other varying dangerous drugs shows the disconnect between the Obama administration and the common sense of the American people. The government's continued uh, allocation of resources and controls with the intent to of trying to prevent the adult use of marijuana has been in, inter, uh, or counterproductive and an indefensible limitation of people's rights to control their own lives. The Obama administration has had the chance to correct a foolish and counterproductive policy. Now it's up to Congress and the next administration. Uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Democrat, California. Politicians aren't doctors or scientists. Marijuana research prohibition uh, uh, prohibitions are outdated, unscientific, and dangerous for those who need MMJ. Uh, Congressman Jared Polis, Democrat, Colorado. The Drug Enforcement Administration's decision to keep marijuana as Schedule 1 uh, drug is frustrating 
unscientific, and frankly out of date. It is ridiculous to classify marijuana alongside other Schedule One drugs like heroin. This is further evidence that it is past time that Congress legalize and regulate marijuana like alcohol using Colorado as an example. Congressman Ted Lieu, Democrat, California. The DEA's refusal to reclassify marijuana to permit medical use is a cruel decision that ignores the suffering of patients who find well-documented relief in medical cannabis products. It also shows a profound disregard for where the medical community and the American public stand on the issue. Me uh, medical decisions should be made between a patient and his or her doctor, not the government. The DEA's policy pre uh, perpetuates the nonsensical uh, divergence between states and federal medical marijuana policies. The DEA should be spending its limited resources on targeting high-priority narcotics rather than eradicating roadblocks to medical marijuana. Congressman Ed, uh, Ed, Congressman Ed Perlmutter, uh, Democrat, Colorado. DEA's decision to not reschedule marijuana is a missed opportunity and fails to address conflicts between state and federal law. Uh, CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta, while the DEA continues to dig in on Schedule One status, deeming no medical benefit the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services simultaneously holds patents on cannabinoids for a wide range of medicinal purposes. The DEA continues to place marijuana alongside heroin and LSD as a drug with high abuse potential, even though the DEA's own former chief administrative law judge, Francis Young, disagrees with this. That a plant could provide so much benefit and still remain behind these locked doors is worth speaking up about. Mason Tevert of the Marijuana Policy Project. The DEA's refusal to remove marijuana from Schedule 1 is quite frankly, mind-boggling. It is intellectually dishonest and completely indefensible. Not everyone agrees marijuana should be legal, but few will deny that it is less harmful than alcohol and many prescription drugs. It is less toxic, less addictive, and less damaging to the body. My, uh, Michelle Collins, Michael Collins of the Drug Policy Alliance, excuse me, uh, keeping marijuana in Schedule 1 shows the DEA continues to ignore research and places politics above science. In reality, marijuana should be descheduled and states should be allowed to set their own policies. Marijuana prohibition ruins thousands of lives every year through meaningless arrests, disappropriate, uh, disproportionately impacting people of color. Thankfully, voters in numerous states are legalizing marijuana through ballot initiatives. The next administration must move quickly to end federal prohibition and undo this destructive and racially biased policy. Paul Arm Ar Armanetto of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. There exists over 25,000 peer-reviewed papers specific uh, uh, speci specific to cannabis. By contrast to PubMed database search uses the keyword Adderill yields fewer than 200 total papers. And unlike controversial therapeutic humans have been using cannabis for uh, therapeutic purposes for thousands of years. 26 states now authorize the plant's medicinal use by state statute and one in eight Americans self-identify as current consumers. There is nothing scientific about willful ignorance. Seth McFarlane, U.S. affirms its prohibition on medical marijuana, you know, because we haven't done enough dumb things this year. Montel Williams, I wonder if the administration thought seriously ill people like me who re rely on medical marijuana to cope with our conditions would be cheering on the Drug Enforcement Administration's decades late decision to break the government's monopoly on marijuana research. Let us not forget that the same federal government that classifies marijuana as Schedule 1, no medical use, also holds dozens of patents to the marijuana's uh, medical benefit. 
to marijuana's medical benefit. Let us not forget that by failing to deschedule marijuana entirely, this administration has decided to continue the legacy of injustice that has come from decades of prohibition uh, predicated on a, a lie. Decades in minority uh, defendants in particular were sentenced to ridiculous terms of confinement for simply pos f simple possession of a drug that is safer than alcohol or tobacco. Let us not forget that the administration has chosen to continue to allow millions of seriously ill and uh, uh, disabled Americans like me to risk serious criminal liability for following the advice of other doctors. So forgive me for not cheering for government uh, for doing what is it should have done, done all along, decades later after its policy wrecked havoc in so many lives, Mr. President, when do you sick and when do us sick and disabled people matter to you, Secretary Clinton? How about you, members of Congress? How about Republicans generally, overwhelmingly oppose common sense marijuana policy? Montel, Montel Williams, sorry, POTUS. Uh, DEA's action on marijuana not nearly good enough. Why should I be a criminal for treating my MS? But the marijuana law reform advocates weren't the only ones with something to say about whether cannabis should be rescheduled. Here's uh, how DEA Acting Administration Chuck Rosenberg himself justified the decision. Using established scientific standards that are consistent with that same FDA drug approval process and based on the FDA scientific and medical evaluation, as well as the legal standards in the CSA, marijuana will remain a Schedule I controlled substance. It does not have a currently acceptable medical use in treatment in the United States. There is a lack of accept accepted safety for its use under medical supervision, and it has a high potential for abuse. Uh, if the scientific understanding about marijuana changes, and it could change, then the decision could change. But we will remain tethered to science as we must, and as the status demands, it certainly would be odd to rely on science when it suits us and ignore it otherwise. Finally, here's a reaction from leading prohibitionist Kevin Sabat of Smart Approach to Marijuana. We are pleased to see that the, administra the Obama administration, using the exhaustive eight-factor scientific analysis required by law, understands the science uh, the way we understand almost every single major medical association in the country understands it. Big Marijuana was counting on President Obama to reschedule or even deschedule marijuana in order to circumvent the FDA process to turn a quick profit on unregulated products. But this decision means that medications based on marijuana will have to go through the same rigorous testing process as all of the other medications. Time Magazine, Politics, 2016 Election, Hillary Clinton Campaign Says She Would Reschedule Marijuana, August 11, 2016, Democratic President Candidate uh, Hillary Clinton plans to reschedule marijuana if she is elected in November, according to a statement issued by, her, by the campaign. 
Uh, while the Drug Enforcement Administration denies a petition earlier Thursday to remove marijuana from its Schedule One list under the Controlled Substance Act, leaving the drug lumped in with heroin, LSD, and other illicit substances, the Clinton campaign thinks that scheduling the drug serves a higher purpose. Rescheduling the drug serves a higher purpose. Marijuana is already being used for medical purposes in states across the country, and it has the potential for even further medical use. Maya Harris, a senior policy advisor to Clinton's campaign, said in a statement reported by the Denver Post, as Hillary Clinton has said throughout her, this campaign, we should make it easier to study marijuana so that we can better understand its potential benefits as well as its side effects. The DA decision to keep pot as Schedule One drug affirms the federal government's belief that there is insufficient evidence to show that any specific benefits the drug might offer would overweigh any of the unknown risks. Clinton, however, seems to disagree, and the campaign contended that if elected, she would reclassify the drug to Schedule II substance, which would mean acceptance that marijuana has a medical use for treatment. As president, Hillary would build on the important steps announced today by, the reske uh, re by rescheduling marijuana from Schedule I to Schedule II substance. She will also ensure Colorado and other states that have enacted marijuana laws can continue to serve as laboratories of democracy. Harris continued. The DEA's uh, decision reverberates throughout the California marijuana campaign. So this had a reaction on both sides. Uh, the con side saying that this reaffirms their concern So they use the Catch-22 law, basically, to say that somehow this, this is like reason, which it's not. And the other side said, this proves why everyone needs to support Prop 64 AUMA, Adult Use of Marijuana Act, and just pass it. Because otherwise, we're going to have to deal with this kind of crap from uh, basically an inept sort of no inertia uh, federal government that moves like the ICE in getting SacramentoBee.com News Politics Government Capital Alert DEA pot decision reverberates in California legalization campaign. The Obama administration's decision Thursday to keep marijuana classified among the nation's most dangerous drugs divided campaign operatives in California cannabis legalization debate. Wayne Johnson, campaign consultant for No on Prop 64, said that the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration has again validated the opposition's deeply held skepticism about legalizing marijuana. The decision is a stark contrast to the push by the big uh, players in the marijuana industry who wrote Prop 64 and are now spending millions of dollars rushing this flawed measure to the ballots in order to capture the California market, Johnson said. Proponents of Prop six, Proposition 64, the fall ballot initiative to legalize marijuana for adults 21 and older, said the DEA's determination underscores why the measure remains critical and why California must fill the vacuum left by the federal regulatory inertia. We do agree with federal regulators that more independent scientific and clinical research is desperately needed, which is why Prop 64 invests millions of new dollars into California's uh, uh, California-based research on marijuana's medical and non-medical benefits, as well as the enforceable traffic safety standards. Proposition 64 spokesman Jason Kenney said, Retaining marijuana as a Schedule One drug means it has no medical value despite more than half of the states approving it, its use for medicine. It's unclear how much of a long-term factor the government's classification decision will have in the m m mufti, oh, oh yeah, that's right, 
<laughs> this is an F and 7L, multi-million dollar fight to bring pot out of the shadows because medical marijuana has not been central to the debate. Instead, those favoring legalization have keyed in the uh, in on the failures of marijuana uh, prohibition and the uneven enforcement of communities of color. Critics have pounded away at the pros uh, prospect of profit-driven marijuana co companies becoming the next big tobacco. Both sides of the legalization campaign are scheduled to appear Friday in the Sacramento courthouse, where a judge will hear dueling lawsuits challenging the official ballot arguments. Proponents want the judge to reject or order our, uh, amendments to a number of arguments against Proposition 64, including what they believe is false uh, con uh, cont contention that children would be exposed to advertisements promoting marijuana, gummy candies, and brownies. Opponents say it specifically uh, contemplates TV advertising and are pushing for the de deletion of language asserting uh, federal law prohibits it. Now to back up, so this, that you're digesting all this information in these stories, uh, the Daily Beast came out with a new poll that marijuana legalization enjoys a widespread support in California. 61.8% of Californians now favor legalizing marijuana, like something like 41% vigorously and enthusiastically support this, and uh, I think 2.8% are considering turning towards saying yes on this issue, which would push the 61.8 up closer to 65, am I correct? And with the 5% margin, that means for sure 60%. San Diego Metro.com. Daily Business Reporting, August 12, 2060. Vote California. New poll, marijuana legalization measure enjoys widespread support in California. Like uh, California likely voters appear poised to pass Proposition 64 in the November general election to legalize recreational marijuana, according to a statewide poll by Poblowski Research. Uh, the 61.8% who say they will vote yes in favor of Prop 64 reflects a modest increase since Problowski research last tested the issue in February of this year. Moreover, support appears relatively enthusiastic with a plurality. 44.7% saying they will definitely vote yes in favor of the proposition. Voters who said they would probably vote in favor of the measure totaled 14.9%. Voters leaning towards voting yes totaled 2.2%. Proposition 64. The initiative was designed to legalize marijuana and hemp under the state law and enact a 15% sales tax, as well as the cultivation tax of $9.25 per ounce of flowers and $2.75 per ounce for leaves, with expectations for qualifying medical marijuana sales and cultivation exceptions, excuse me. The initiative was also designed to prevent license for corporate and large-scale marijuana businesses for five years in order to deter the unreasonable restraints on co comp uh, competition by certain or, or by creation and maintenance of unlawful monopoly power. Other provisions relate to right of employers driving under the influence and marijuana business locations. That was a lot of stories to get through. It is windy. I'm like chilly now.
shut down this morning. As a matter of fact, uh, pot tax dies in California legislature. Pot tax killed without even a comment. <laughs> Los Angeles Times. Pot tax goes down in flames in California legislature. A bill to put an excise tax on medical marijuana in California was killed Thursday by a Senate panel after advocates for cannabis users said it would put a financial burden on patients. The Senate Appropriations Committee shelved AB 2243 with knowledge that California voters will consider a 15% tax pot tax on November 8th when they take up Proposition 64 which al would also legalize recreational use of cannabis. The legislation, by uh, the legislation by Assemblyman Jim Wood, Democrat Heidelsberg, would have charged up to $9.25 per ounce of marijuana flowers and $2.75 per ounce of pot leaves and $1.25 per ounce of immature pot plants. Wood said the, founding, uh, the funding is needed to help cover enforcement and environmental costs under the, a new system approved last year that will license the growing transport and sale of medical marijuana. The assemblyman was baffled by the vote and seeked an explanation. Something got in the way of a good policy today, and I think we all deserve a real answer for what, this, <laughs> for what that was, Wood said. Some in the marijuana industry said it was premature to approve a tax two years before the Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulations begins issuing licenses. The measure was opposed by Americans for Safe Access and California Normal. We generally oppose any excise tax that is going to be based on the patient, uh, on the patient, okay, passed on the patient. Melissa Wilcox of Americans for Safe Access said after the vote, the measure was shelved without comment, and committee chairman Richard Lara, Democrat Bell Gardens, did not return calls for a, an explanation. And they told you to take a flying leap. I like to get that Justin Trudeau and shove my foot as far up his ass because I'm sure it goes real far. I'm sure my will tickle his nose hairs with my foot up his ass because he's such a shit for the nose. I hate Trudeau, man. She's just sick.
Amazon started cracking on, bro. Hello? I don't think Amazon on that. No, I don't know. No, seriously.